going. Just let it keep, keep going. It's going to catch. Beautiful. Part two of this two-part series is brought to you by Mountain View Auto Group. Prepare for the off-road. Also in part by Clearwater Lights. See the difference. What's up everybody? So we've made it to the Adventure Academy and I think it's finally starting to sink in. I think I'm figuring out what you got me into. <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell, there's a lot of Jeeps here. Welcoming party that's got all kind of stuff for us and I think it's gonna be a great experience. So we are about to have orientation and then after that, I think we are on a trail We're for about trail. two hours and I think the plan is, is that I'm going to be the driver. <laughs> We're going to get into the orientation and we'll see you soon on the trail. Wish me luck. We're real new Jeepers. Yeah, cool. Is it just Rubicons that have lockers? Yeah. Okay, so we won't need the, to worry about that. They, it's, they have, <laughs> yeah, they have dedicated lockers. Everybody else has uh, that limited slip. So your vehicle, if they don't have their vehicle locked, it's going to operate just like yours. And that's where that... Lots of new Jeep owners, or at least new to off-road Jeep owners, had a lot of questions regarding their equipment. Greg did a great job answering those questions and started increasing confidence right from the start. After about an hour going through equipment information, trail etiquette, and techniques, we headed out for the morning trail. The number of participants is already set at a low number, but they split us up into two groups to allow for even more one-on-one -on -one time. The event was held at Wind Rock Park in Oliver Springs, Tennessee which is an OHV mecca providing 73,000 acres and more than 300 miles of trails. They even have their own app to help you navigate. First bit of help was ensuring each driver had their Jeep properly set up for the challenges ahead. Hello? You in four low? Yes. No. No. He's the... he's not, she's not in four low, she's in four high. Oh. So then what do I do? So I go to neutral on the transmission shifter. Okay, whoops, okay. Yep, and then shove that four low stick to, towards your passenger, and then go back. You should A get one further. more quick. That's yep. it. Got it. Got and then it. you put it back in drive and... <laughs> the first obstacle was water fording. Now, more of an educational moment rather than anything difficult as the crossing was only about six inches deep, but they took the time to educate on what to look for in the event of deeper crossings. Obstacle is a water fording obstacle here. You want to get eyes on it, um, you know, make sure there's tracks, okay, there's tracks going across the other side. Um, you know, it has a nice solid stable bottom. You can see rocks, you can see the gravel under there. If not, you know, there's other <coughs> options of you know, figuring out if it's safe to cross or not, you know. Most of the time you want to send your passenger out there and have them walk across. Yeah, yeah bring them on. The hood and poke a stick in there, throw some rocks. Um, you know, make sure there's not swift current. Anytime there's a swift current, generally that's a more shallow part. Not necessarily all the time. The swift current could be out in the middle where there's a lot of flow or a deep channel or something. But if you see, you know, uh, ripples, that's probably the generally it's going to be shallower there than a uh, deep deep part you know that's not moving not as much water moving under there um, so yeah we'll make this short and sweet but you generally just want to get eyes on it make sure it's safe to cross so any questions no you guys eager what's, to get on the trail what's huh? the usual safe <laughs> safe uh, <laughs> yeah. spec that they have well, um, yeah. 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 like part of the trail rating badge one of five elements yeah. is water fording and that's 32 inches which would be to the bottom of the headlights here it a slow you know one two mile an hour yeah, real so obviously speed. the faster you go the water is going to come up yeah. and if you ever cross in the water and your engine stalls out don't restart it don't restart it, get pulled out. If you don't know how to go through the process of checking your motor before you start it, have someone do it that knows, just don't start it because it will ruin your motor. Just one little turn of the key. If you're pulling any water into your intake, don't start it. Um, all right, that's okay. it.
your first water crossing. It became clear that they were intending to include each of the five categories that is included in the trail badge heritage throughout the training day. Whoa, that was cool. Okay, watch me on that side and make sure I'm not going. We got another foot and a half over here. Hello. Hello. Diesel or is it the two liter? The diesel. Diesel. Mm -hmm. I feel stuck. Ah. Straighten. Give it, there you go.
After about two hours, we were all getting hungry and the new drivers were ready for a break. So we all headed back for lunch while a representative from Warren taught about proper recovery options. After lunch, we were back on the trail for more obstacles and instruction. So there are two routes that we will go up and go down. Come on down. So I have to be able to get it home. We're gonna, careful, yeah, we're gonna go down this too. So, and we can look at it from that side. What are things that you would look at if you have to go over this? Because you do have to go over it. This ledge right here. What do you think your best approach would be? Hi, how are you? <laughs> well, actually, nice step one, when you come up to an obstacle and you're on your own, get out, look at it from both sides because it'll look completely different from the other side. And then you might go, oh, like there's here, you can see there's a ramp. Mm -hmm. Right. And that ramp can be very useful, right? You're, what, you guys are all wranglers, right? Uh, yep. Yeah, you'll be fine. Wait, I want to get that expression. <laughs> We'll be fine, okay? You will be fine. We will get you. Don't worry. Don't worry. The um, And we'll start at the easiest line, but if you want, we can actually get more and more aggressive. Uh, All right. I just, that, that's what gets Holly. Holly. They're right up my nose. I can just, I see the confidence that's exuding out of you. <laughs> You're fine. You are fine. Just close your eyes. All right, we'll go down this way to start. Right. We'll okay. ease you into it. Okay. And we'll, right. we'll get you where you want to go and you'll feel how easy it is. Okay. All right, you got it. I'm staying out here. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't get in that vehicle. <laughs> Which one are we doing first? We got this. She's, I'm, I'm going to go on this side first. We'll get her down that. I'll do the lower if you do the upper. Okay. And then, uh, then we come back up and then we can... Do what he says. No problem. Easy button. how it's crazy how it's just amazing that is really good way to go awesome job. that was right, fantastic I know when you get used so many people are afraid of manuals but when you get used to it that crawl that ratio amazing. is amazing going up will be the same way she probably won't even need the gas pedal power didn't even struggle like a champ nice 
way up there. Save what you got. Now turn. There you go, nice and easy. See, that's that two-door breakover angle. Amazing. After playing on the rock crawling area, it was time to tackle climbing and descending steep hills. What we're going to do is go about half to three quarters of the way up the hill, stop, and pretend that the tires are spinning and you can't go any further, okay? Because the reality is you probably have enough grip to go the rest of the way today. But we're going to practice that because in real life, the first time that happens to you, you will have a religious experience. <laughs> okay, you'll go halfway up and the tires will start spinning because at that point you've got to back down safely and under control. Because backing down unsafely and out of control is expensive. Okay? So what we're going to do is go up part way and then you're going to come back using the side mirrors, the center mirror, or your backup camera to stay in these tracks. That's the key. You got it, come slow. It. Right First gear. You know what? If you do it five or ten times more, it's a cake. <laughs> All right? 
Just practice, practice, <gasps> practice, practice. All right. Okay. You're all set. But it's really helpful. It's yeah. not a one-person job. I can tell. See, nice and slow, under control. That was beautiful. Go ahead and stop. Everyone on the trail had a great time and walked away with a great education to get them started on their off-road journey. We headed back and Holly and I got a chance to speak with Greg, who was the lead instructor for the day. Well, listen, I appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Thanks for putting on the event. It, oh, was, you're it was a fantastic event. Um, Holly had a blast. Would you like to speak? Yeah. Holly's right. awesome, by the way. <laughs> I got a question. Okay. Uh -oh. So, David signed us up for this. <laughs> I didn't really know what I was getting into. Um, and I'm wondering, just are, is it mostly people like me that are brand new that know nothing that come to these events? Or is it like a mixture of people? It's or? a mixture. We thought it was going to be people like you. Right. That's kind of what the inception of the program was. People that have never been off-road. Right. Um, and we've had several that have vehicles that still have dealer plates on them and whatever that are brand, brand new. Right. Uh, but we found over the time that there's been more people that have experience mm -hmm. that are still coming. And they're still learning and they're right. still enjoying it. So uh -huh. it's good. But... Yeah, so the reality of it is there is a mix, but I would still say at least half the people are, they would consider themselves new to off -road. Right, okay. Well, I think it was wonderful. Um, I have to admit my leg was shaking quite a bit on the break many times. Um, the going down the rocks, terrifying until I did it, and then it was like no big deal. It was really right. kind of fun. And then the hill. Yeah. Um, do you know what? What angle that was? The, I don't, I should have, it's I, right in our, we have off-road pages, I think, we should have looked. I think I saw, I was not trying to, I was yep. trying not to take my eyes off of the girl directing me, but I think I saw 30 with that. Could have been. Would yeah, I would, be I, would okay. I would say it's in that ballpark, and okay. that was a, a loose gravel hill, so. Yeah, well, it, it took me a bit to get up it, but I did, and I, I think, I mean, to me it was such a confidence builder. Yeah. So, I, I just wanted to say thank you, because this event... Um, not only boosted my confidence that I could do this, David usually drives and he'll yeah. probably still usually drive, but I like to know that I can get us yeah. out of something if I need to. And I also think it will keep me from bugging him when we ride together, <laughs> because in the past I would tell him we can't do that, that's too dangerous. And now I realize it's really, Jeeps are really very capable vehicles. Well, so, so one of the reasons that I love these this series so much is for people like you, mm -hmm. I see you in the beginning and I could see the nerves on your right, face. Right. And then to see you after you accomplish it and you just let your Jeep take that obstacle right, on right. and you're just like, yes. Well, and then you, the next time, it's You nothing. realize the Jeep can do more than yeah. you think it can. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, thank you. Oh, thank you're welcome. Much. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right, Holly. For me personally, and I think a lot of people who have never done off-roading, um, it is... It, it's quite scary um, when you can't, you're, when you're not outside the vehicle, when you're in the vehicle, because you can't see where your wheels are and, and you, you don't know the feel of it yet. But at, at an event like this, they have guides at all the hard obstacles that tell you which way to go and which way to drive. In the beginning, there's more of that than as the day goes on and suddenly things that you're doing later in the day would have had a guide in the beginning, but suddenly you're your, your confidence raises, and I think yeah. that's what's really important. And so now I got the feel of the Jeep, and so that's why I think these events are so good, because it gets you out there. And to be honest, I wanted to weasel out of the um, going back down the 30 hill degree descent. hill descent, um, because it just looked like it, I was getting ready to go down a roller coaster, and it was terrifying at, from the top. And um, the woman that was at the top as my guide telling me, she she <laughs> she wasn't gonna let me out. <laughs> she just kept encouraging me, but she was also directing me, and I felt very safe and very confident. So uh, these events are well worth the money and, and the time to come do them. That's it. All right, guys, All right. we're out of here. <laughs> Bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learning more about the Jeep Adventure Academy. Check it out for yourself by going to jeepadventureacademy.com and find one, an event near you. And we're not we're not sponsored or anything by Jeep Adventure uh, Academy or anything like that. Uh, we just really 
thought it was a great uh, a, a great tool. Uh, but remember, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. It does help us a lot to know what content that you're enjoying. And until next time, make, make life, life amazing. amazing. Oh yeah, I test drove a Rubicon while I was there. I think it was a diesel too by the way it sounded. <laughs>